pam pam me 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 the host with Mike Rippy Welcome to Meet the Host. My name is Mike Rippy and you are watching Meet the Host, the show that flips the script on the host where we get the most out of the host and you can join us on social media at Meet the Host all over the YouTube channel, the Facebook page and Twitter and today live from New York all the way cross country now in Los Angeles we have the host Andy Peak. Hey, welcome we to go. the show. I like how you went like with the Saturday Night Live from New York, but in LA. Yeah, that was nice. There we go. Good so, be here. Andy, before we start, let's tell the people where can we find you on social media. Uh, Andy Peak. There is another Andy Peak in Scotland, and I was after him for like a year and a half. I'm like, can I get that Instagram handle? And he finally just gave it to me around Christmas time. He just gave it to about you about two years ago. Yeah, nicest guy yeah, yeah, ever. Christmas gift. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, so Andy Peak on Instagram, Twitter, uh, just search Andy Peak Official on Facebook. Just search Andy Peak on Facebook. And then we have to give a shout out to Andy Peak uh, in Scotland because if yeah. it wasn't for him, we might not yeah. have that, that, guy's awesome. that easiness. I love him. Yeah. Um, if there's any Michael Rippey out there, you know, I might have to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, definitely appreciate you being here so yeah. much. Um, and thanks again. We are doing a Facebook Live outside of this, but this is the episode and you are watching. So let's start off. With what do you host, Andy? Well, that's a great question. So I host, I keep saying that's a great question after every question, don't I? I'm going to stop saying that. Uh, so I have a weekly parenting show called Papa Peaks Parenting. It's on Little Things Media. Their Facebook page has about 9 million followers. So we get a good about 100,000, sometimes 200,000 views per show. And it's really just about things that I'm doing with my kids on a weekly basis. There's also DIYs. And we have different viral videos of parents and kids and sometimes a cute dog or animal mixed in there. Um, a big part of what this show is about is there's a section of it called Dad on a Dime. And a big part of what I do as a parent is I just find fun, interesting things to do with kids without spending a whole lot of money, such as going to a climbing gym after 8 p.m. The price goes from $25 to $10. So I explained to my daughter, she says, Dad, why do you always look to save money? I said, well, look, if we'd save, what's that, $35, you know, if by going at 8 p.m., then we can basically go out and eat dinner for free. So, Smart. yeah, so things like that, getting bikes from thrift stores. Um, my daughter got our Christmas tree on Craigslist. I sent her into this house. I'm like, here's two $5 bills. Ask the lady if you can get it, the Christmas tree for $5. If she says no, then go ahead and pay 10 and get it. And she came back. She Teaching had, them young. Yeah, yeah. It, this sounds like if you play golf like later in the day. Uh, get those, I, go th get the, the better rates, the better prices. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll definitely. I'll definitely sweat my ass off just to save a few bucks. On so so some, these tips could be helpful for anybody, basically. Yeah, yeah and this they is, really can. Is this a half hour program? Yo, What's jacket, it? thrift shop, right there. Thrift shop, yep. uh, sale, sale line. Yeah. Uh, sure. I'm all about the sales yeah. and the deal, so I'm going to have to, when I have a child, maybe I have to check out the show, all right. but I'll check it out in, in advance good. anyways. Yeah, good to know. Uh, but what are we talking about? 30 minutes, 15 minutes, yeah, an hour? Yeah, it's a 30-minute show Okay. Uh, every Saturday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Okay. and it's live, so if people want to tune in and chime in and questions, comments, concerns, I'm still waiting for somebody to, like I've had a friend say, I'm going to troll your show, show today. I'm really waiting for just some like awful, rude comment. It hasn't happened yet, though. Hasn't happened Good yet. Thing. There's a lot of nice viewers, but... Sometimes trolls make things entertaining, though. It, yeah. I will say, well, as somebody watching this video, will somebody please troll this video? Just troll with some, it so hard. Like, hey, hey, you douchebags, why do you have the same hairdo going on or something? What are you, the twin day? Uh, Can somebody please troll this is something. Planned. Yeah, yeah, we're trolling. So <laughs> let's talk about uh, before Papa Speaks. Yeah. Right? And uh, I know you've hosted on Discovery Channel. Yeah, yeah. Let's I talk about that. a segment called All American Makers. And it's so funny in terms of how things come together. Um, there was a casting put out, they were looking for a moderator for um, a test group looking at new um, inventions on a show called All American Makers. And I was just one of the first people to submit. I had a good reel, I had a good resume, and they, I just because I submitted early, they called me, they said, are you available these dates? I said, I'm available for the five of those dates. They said, we'll change the last one, and we're good. I said, great. So we did it, and um, it was really just a matter of timing. I was, it wasn't like I was great. It wasn't I was awful. I was just good enough, and I was in the right place at the right time. And that's what a lot of things are about sure. in showbiz. And you right said something right really uh, 
prudent in you uh, submitted early, yeah. which is a great tip yeah. no matter who you are or what you're doing to try to submit as soon as you can, get in early, yeah. uh, and that will help your cost. Yeah, because casting directors, anyone in production, they want you as a host or a performer, actor, whatever you are, they want you to solve their problem. Their problem is we need this person to do this. And if you're the first person and you show up and they say, wow, this is that person to do this, I don't have to sort through 500, 1,000 more people to solve my problem. I just found it with person number three. Mm -hmm. Problem solver. Yeah. Be that person. So uh, outside of Discovery Channel that you've hosted on Women's Entertainment, right? Yeah, three men in a chick flick. <laughs> that was the name of the show. So it was me and two other guys yeah. just uh, shucking and jiving about chick flicks doing interstitials right before and after the commercials. That was pretty fun. And um, there's a number of other online outlets I know that you've worked mm -hmm. on. Uh, but what would you describe as your style of hosting? Well, I, I really don't like to be stuck to a script too much because sometimes I feel like that can just make things feel very forced and, and contrived. I, I like things to be very loose and, and conversational. Um, I like having other people on with me because I really enjoy the interaction with people. I think that really adds a, um, uh, an excitement of the unexpected. I mean, at any point, you and I could say or do something unexpected. Like we could troll each other. We could troll each other, exactly. <laughs> like you were really getting excited yeah. about the whole troll conversation <laughs> earlier. Uh, so so um, that, a lot of improv. And then I, I do really enjoy saying things that are, that are slightly uh, beyond people's comfort zones. To, to make everyone make, a little on edge? Yeah, make things a little exciting. Okay. You know, the, what is it, the, the great Frank Copra quote, there are no rules in filmmaking, just don't be boring. The, yes, we, yeah. are, we don't want to be boring. What's your favorite part of hosting? Uh, not being boring? Yeah, my favorite part of hosting is, is the live interaction. live interaction. It's when things are really live, really improvise and, and pushing people's limits. I, I had something, a job I was doing in Las Vegas um, with a, a large pharmaceutical company last year about this time. And I was going around asking pe employees of this company what their favorite thing is working at this company. And this one lady was walking by, I said, what's your favorite thing? And she's like, I'm on the phone with my mom. I'm like, give me the phone. And I, I put it on speaker, I said, mom, What's your favorite thing about your daughter working at this company? And the mom is on speakerphone answering into the microphone. Yeah. And it just made for great video content. It was just very engaging, very present in the moment. And that's, that's my favorite if, thing. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were a comedian. Uh, only when I'm funny. <laughs> only when I'm funny. I, that's great. I asked you what you're... When, when I'm not funny, I'm just a bad comedian. Well, hey, there's a lot of bad comedians out there. Yeah. Uh, I asked you what your favorite part about hosting is. I always love to hear this. What's your least favorite part about hosting? Uh, the fact that I'm not doing it all day, every day. I love that answer because yeah. that's how I feel. I want to be hosting 24-7, yeah. meeting new people, getting the information out. That's, that's... Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes when you get stuck with a script that you just... It's like sucking your soul out of you to like get through it or you're just like pitching some product that you're no. not really into uh, or just be working with a team that might be a little, you know, a director might be kind of a pain in the butt or they'll tell you to do something one way, you do it that way and then they say, no, 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 do it like this. I'm like, I just did it the way you sent me to do it. And, well, uh, this is good because that leads me to my next question, yeah. which would be, is there any special way that you prepare before events? Do you have any superstitions or do you do something every time or is it just you go with the flow? Uh, I'm, I'm really a big go with the flow kind of guy. Every situation is different. People bring different dynamics to it. Uh, I, I, just, I like to spend time with people before to get comfortable, to get relaxed, to get in the moment. Um, I feel like wardrobe is important because it, it conveys uh, you know, how you're, you know, how you are and how you fit into this whole thing. Um, uh, knowing your knowing your talking points is really important. Uh, I also have an ear prompter that I use sometimes, and that really helps, especially when I have like kind of a monologue I need to deliver up front on something. Sure, I've used that a few times where I'll pre-record something mm -hmm. and then just feed it back into my ear and spit it out as I'm talking. Uh, yeah, but just just knowing knowing what your real talking points are, hitting those, and being in the moment. That's, that's really important. Let's be in this moment and let's hear, uh, you've done a lot of different things, yeah. a lot of different hosting of different types of shows. Do you have a hardest guest that you've ever dealt with? And if so, who is it and why? 
The hardest guest that I've ever dealt with. I have the hardest director. It was a spokesman gig. I have a, had a director that we just did not get along. And I bumped into one of the guys on that set a couple months later. I'm like, oh, hey, what's up, Alan? He's like, hey. He's like, I was like, yeah, what's up? He was like, what's up with that director just ragging on you, man? I was for, like, for no he, reason. He was just didn't like he you. He was just... Give, he, nobody liked him, it, and, and he was just difficult, and we're like, what's up with this guy? And it's just one of those days where you say, all right, I'm just going to get through this. I'm so that, gonna... this is your tip on how to handle that type yeah, of situation? Yeah, stay calm. It, it's that meme. Keep calm and carry on. You know what? I could have thrown a fuss and, and, and really stirred the pot, but let's just keep cool. And you know what? Other people on that production, they see that. They notice that, and they'll say, you know what? Andy was having a rough day here, but he kept cool. He worked through it, and we could see ourselves hiring him for something else in the future. Well, this is good. Don't then. go all Christian Bale on them. <laughs> or Mel Gibson. Yeah. Uh, who is the uh, easiest guest you have ever had? Is there, is there someone who's just like, a, this is the person? Uh, and what makes a guest so easy? Well, I had a great time. I don't know if you saw it on my reel, uh, interviewing Carson Kressley from yes. Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. He was really funny. And um, that was fun. Uh, who else have I uh, interviewed? Uh, just, oh. uh, just a lot of... A lot of different. Just someone that's open, is that what makes an easy guess? Yeah, easy someone for that's you? really relaxed, because you know how it is. Sometimes you'll be talking to somebody, they're like, I, 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 just like, just relax. Uh -huh. It's a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's you, me, and a camera. These guys aren't even here. No, just, just no chat. one's here. Just yeah, us. exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer shorter segments or longer segments? I prefer fun and entertaining segments. I like and I'm that. not a size queen, so length doesn't matter. As long as it's good. This is a good point to troll us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you're preparing for your different types of segments, are you developing your own questions or how do you determine uh, beforehand what you're going to ask? Yeah, that's great. So um, for Papa Peak's parenting, yeah, it's a very, I was just having on a phone call with the producer on my way here uh, talking about this upcoming show for this Saturday. Uh, when I was interviewing Carson Kressley, I prepared a bunch of things beforehand, and he's a world-class horseback rider, and I found a picture of him in a really tight zebra shirt, and I said, you're a world-class horseback rider, but how can you explain this? And I had it like all, as the wallpaper on my phone just for that moment, and he just he totally started cracking up. Yeah. Where'd you get that? And it was really funny. So it really depends on what you're doing, but know your content. Know your stuff. I mean, you've got some great questions like prepared right there, and that's really good. So just found this in my hand. Yeah, yeah. It's so when you're crazy. hosting something, know your guests, know what you're talking about, know your environment. And, and I want to throw in what you said earlier in our segment about um, making the person that you're going to be dealing with a little bit more comfortable, getting to know, know them beforehand. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. It really relaxes everyone, makes it easier yeah. when you're doing the filming. Absolutely. Uh, a couple more questions before we finish up here. Uh, one of my favorites that I get to ask because it's very unique and it's okay. uh, for each person. Uh, who's your, what's your dream hosting role? Oh, man. You prepared. Boom. Read it on the business card. Okay, here it is. This is great. Uh, Andy Peake, his dream hosting role is the future host of The Price is Right. That's right. Mike Rippey, come on down. I will come on down if you get that hosting role. And if you do become The Price is Right host, you better get me on that show because I want to be in a segment. I, I, I want to win both of the prize uh, is at the end. You know, yeah. I want to win not just mine. I want to win both. You know, I would like, definitely get you on the show. And this is a big part of just putting something out there into the world. Strong. And, and sometimes, I'll be, I'll be honest, sometimes people read that and I'm like a little embarrassed. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should take that off. But I'm like, you know what? YOLO, have this, some balls, I, Andy. This is Put amazing. Put it out there. This is amazing because yeah. you're putting it out there. It's quite a conversation piece. People it's, like this to is, talk about. This is, great. This is another card. great tip for any future host, anyone interested in hosting. Uh, put what you maybe want as a goal, as your dream on your card so you're always seeing it. It will help you yeah. to, to focus and then people will say, hey, hey, maybe you don't got, you're not doing the prices right, but something similar to that and you can, as a stepping stone, be the host of that show yeah. uh, and whatnot. Uh, what do you think of prices right right now with uh, Drew Carey as the I host? think Drew's great. How do you think he compares to Bob? Uh, Bob, there's just, Bob was there he's so long and he's just such a classic yep. and he's, it, it's like anything. It's, you, you know, guys are just irreplaceable. You can just step in and do the best you can. Yeah. And, and I think Drew is doing a great job. 
And I have no, people are like, oh, you need to take out Drew Cares. I'm like, no, no, no. When Drew's ready to move on, Drew's ready to move on. It's not like an aggressive thing towards him. It's just like, I always say, expand the pie. You know, when, when the right time and place presents itself, then it presents itself. And I would say, I guess it sounds like to me that Drew is keeping the seat warm. Yeah. For Andy Peak. This is go. exciting. I think you yeah. would be great Thanks, as the host. Yeah, really? yeah, okay, but people ask me why. Tell me why. why. They're like, why not Jeopardy? Why not Wheel of Fortune? Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune are a half hour. I need a whole hour. <laughs> and on top of that, old ladies are my specialty. I love old ladies. Oh, they're just the best. They love you back. You I can know. just say <laughs> anything to an old lady. You're like, oh my goodness, it's so nice to have another 30 year old on the show. And they go, oh, he called me 30. That's just the bee's knees. This they get all incredible. excited. Yeah. It's, uh, old lady. Have you been best. to the taping of The Price is Right? I have not. I, I should. I, I live in New York. It's tough. It's tough. And when I'm in L.A., I, I think I it's a prerequisite to be the host. You I at least should. have to see what it I looks did. like. They did have a contest for a, um, the, the male models on The Price is Right, the presenters. Right. And I entered that. Didn't win it, obviously. Mm. Um, I think it was rigged, personally. Because mm-hmm. uh, I had to do an online submission. I couldn't show up in person. I wasn't available. Um, so, but maybe they'll see this and they'll be like, whoa, this, this we might, made a mistake. I think that we're going to recall gonna, on the ballot. I'm not going to lie. I think that when you're hosting the Price is Right in the future, we're going to yeah. have this as like the behind the scenes segment or yeah. something that we throw up where yeah. they're like, whoa, we knew him back. when. Yeah. It's like a throwback Thursday back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, VH1 uh, behind the music. I got two more questions. I like it. There we go. For not, dream hosting role, we know what host is your favorite? Uh, you look at it, all the hosts, whether it's radio, TV, anywhere, is there one that you say that's the person you want to emulate or have a career just like, your favorite host out there? Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's so hard to pick one. It's like picking a favorite basketball player other than Michael Jordan. Um, I would say, well, when, in terms of keeping it real, because I love that just keeping it real Authenticity. thing. Authenticity. Yeah, Howard Stern. Howard keeps it real. And, and it's a New York guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of great, Kimmel did a great job hosting the Oscars, I thought. Um, Billy Crystal was awesome back in the day. I thought Chris Rock last year hosting the Oscars was just hammering it on the head with the race issues. And at some point it got annoying, but at the same time, you're just like, keep going, Chris. You believe this and you're just keeping it real and nailing it over and over again. So you can't deny that. Um. You know, uh, uh, Fallon, I've been on Fallon a couple times, and, and I think he's great. Um, there's, uh, this Colbert's great. There's this so you like, it sounds like you like a lot of the late night. A lot of late night stuff, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really. But how- uh, Ellen, Ellen's really good. Ellen Ellen's is. Ellen's very she engaging. She does a great job of, uh, of being real in, in her own way. I mean, Howard's more, um, a, you know, abrasive and, mm-hmm. and edgy real. Helen's just warm and friendly and fuzzy and, and really funny. Yeah, she is funny. Yeah. So good, good names there. I haven't heard some of those names. A lot of people like to throw out uh, Ryan Seacrest and, and the kind of... Ryan who? Ryan Seacrest. Who? who? Yeah. Do you know? uh, it's because you're from New York. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, this is the point where if there's any hosts that are watching or anyone that maybe says, man, look at this Andy Peak. He's got so much going on. I really want to have a career or be like him, but I don't know where to start. Give us some tips or some advice. You've done a lot already yeah. uh, on this show, and we appreciate that. But yeah. any final tips and advice for any newcomers or, or people on what they should do to have a career like you? And you've done a lot already through this segment. Yeah. Um, in terms of somebody says, I want to be a host, how do I get started? Uh, what? Sometimes I've had people say that to me, like, oh, I want to be an actor. How do I get started? I want to be a host. How do I get started? Make a business card and put TV host on it. You're a TV host. Mm-hmm. Uh, I market myself as a parenting expert, and people have pushed back and questioned me on that. I say... I, you know, in showbiz, in hosting, a lot of times, you know, double branding. Yeah, there you go. A lot of times you just, you need to say you're that and then become that in the process. Right. So that's, that's really important. And then go after things. And you know what? You might be taking some non-paying gigs to start out. Build up your reel. Keep submitting for jobs. Market yourself. Push, 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 push. It's just, it's not going to come to you. People aren't going to say, you're not going to wake up and, and I want to be a host and then your phone's going to ring and say, hey, Andy, we got this vibe out in the ether that you wanted to be a host and we'd love to book you for this just because we felt that vibe from you. No! Take the bull by the horns and hump it into submission, as my cousin would say. All right? You want something, 
go out and get it. Create your own content. Make a show called Meet the Host. Put it out there and then people will see that you're doing stuff. And then when you're talking about your career and things that you want, they'll say, well, do you have some examples of your work? You have stuff to back it up and that's how you get working. You have done way more for promoting this show than you needed to. No. But this has been incredible. Uh, we, you have the show on Saturdays yeah. at noon. Every Saturday noon, Papa Beach Facebook Parenting. Facebook Live. That's they right. can find links to it on, on your own social media on channel too. On all my too. social media. Yep. And again, let's share where we can find on, you. Friend. So if you check out Little Things Facebook page, uh, Saturdays at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Papa Peaks Parenting is on. And uh, good luck with the show and everything else that you got going on. We will look forward to seeing you on The Price is Right as the future host. There we go. As uh, the host, because I will no longer be the future host. You won't be the future host. host. That's right. You're going to be the current host. Yeah. Uh, when you get to that point, you better come back to meet the host. I will. Uh, yeah. So really appreciate it. It's yes. been really fun and great. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Again, Andy Peak, everybody. You can find him on social media at Andy Peak. Uh, we will have all the links for you in the YouTube channel. And uh, on the bottom here, uh, my name is Mike Rippey, and you can catch me on social media at Mike Rips. But follow the show at Meet the Host. Uh, chime in with us, collaborate with us. We want to talk to you and work with you and share your stories as hosts. So thanks again for joining us for another episode of Meet the Host. All we'll right. see you next time. Closing music. Ba da bum 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 bum. Ma 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 ma. So that was awesome.